is uh, 14th March, 2021. We are in the fourth week of Lent. God bless you as you're listening to our message today in Jesus' name. Uh, we just read from Song of Solomon, and that's Song of Solomon chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, has a relationship with the last song we sang. This song was sung in the 18th century. Where well, we read from Psalm chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, says, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley, speaking about Christ. As a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. As the people, as the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me up to the banquet house, and his banner over me is nothing but love. Hallelujah. The banner of the Son of God over us is love, deep love. If you walk into the love of Christ, you'll be ready to do anything for him. We also read from Psalm 27, verse 4. He says, One thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek after him, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire of his temple. I thank God for some of us that are fulfilling this, always dwelling in the house of the Lord to behold his beauty. And uh, each time we come, we indirectly inquire about God's mercy, God's grace, God's blessing. I have found a friend in Jesus. So this very song we sang yesterday, my wife raised it for morning devotion. And while we were singing it, when I, while I was singing it with my family, I had an inspiration to draw our message for today from this song. Praise the Lord. It starts by saying, I have found a friend in Jesus and his everything. Two things happen in this verse. One is that he has found. Have you found to find something is supposed to go looking for it. To find something is supposed to go looking for it. And uh, when we find it, did we make it everything for us? At times we find Jesus, but we don't make Jesus everything for us. When Christ is everything for us, the world cannot shake us. The things of the flesh cannot arrest us in any way. Bible says that Jesus is the bread of life. I will read from John chapter 6, verse 22 to 27. I will read from John chapter 6, verse 22 to 27. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the far shore saw that the disciples had taken the only boat and they realized Jesus had not gone with them. Several boats from landed near the place where the Lord had blessed the bread, and the people had eaten. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boat and went across Capernaum to look for him, to look for him. So several boats gathered there because that was where Jesus stood and used two, five loaves of bread and two fishes and fed men, about 5,000. Women, we know it's usually greater in number in any meeting. That means Jesus fed more than 5,000. So they came for another feeding. And when they saw the disciples, entered the boat and left, and Jesus was not in that boat. They were worried. And so they headed, perhaps, where they are going. What do we learn from this? 
when Jesus is everything to us, we do not seek for miracle. We do not seek for the bread of this world. The right bread for you and I to seek is the bread of life. Verse 25 said, they found him in the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus replied, verse 26, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understood the miracle signs or the miraculous signs. Yes, today in the church, some come because of blessing. Many come because of different purposes. But what Christ is expecting us to do in the church is to come with understanding, to understand the things that are going in the church. But don't be concerned, Jesus advised about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For the Father has given me the seal of approval. They reply, we want to perform God's work too. So just the good message was given them right there and they got it and realized that it's not all about food. It's not, about, it's not all about the things of the flesh. And then they continue to ask, what should we do? That will be the question we'll expect every Christian to ask who is seeking God, who Jesus is everything to. And what did Jesus tell them they have to do? Very simple. He said, this is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one who sent me. Believe in the one who sent me. The song continues. It says, he is fairer of 10,000 to my soul. He is fairer than 10,000 to my soul. In your true mind, do you consider Jesus fairer or fairest, most excellent? That's another word for finest of fairer. Jesus should be considered first in our soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. The song continues. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow, he is my comfort. In trouble, he is my stay. The man who wrote this song must really have been a very wonderful Christian. He must have been somebody that has faced the downturns of life. But what he said is, in sorrow, he is my comfort. In trouble, he is my stay. What does that mean? In times of sorrow, it will come. It's not all about bed of roses for Christian life. There are times for sorrow. There are times for trouble. But what we advised in this song is that stay in God. Make Jesus your comfort. Another word for he is my stay is remain. Keep on. Wait. How do we wait? We wait by praying. We wait by fasting. We wait by looking unto Jesus and trusting him and not begin to panic. Most often we find ourselves panicking. He tells me every care on him to roll. The song continues. He tells me every care on him to roll. Bible says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 29 or to 30, he says, Come unto me, Jesus said, come unto me, all you that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Jesus gives rest. When we know that he gives rest, the songwriter was right when he says, he tells me every care on him to row. Jesus said in verse 29, Take my sheep, take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden 
is light. Christ is supposed to be our hiding place. Christ is supposed to be where we run to when there is trouble. Our friends or ourselves cannot help. The song continues. He is the lily of the garden, the bright and morning star. He is the greatest of the 10,000 to my soul. Verse 2 of the song says, he all, he all my grief has taken, and all my sorrow borne. He recognized that, that Jesus has taken all his grief, and his sorrow he has borne. He personally carried our sin in his body on the cross, willingly offering himself unto it as an, an as on an altar of sacrifice, so that we might die to sin, becoming immune from penalty and power of sin, to live for righteousness by his wound. The Bible says we receive our healing. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. I read from Amplified Version. So what are we saying here? What is your grief? What is your sorrow? Jesus nailed them at that cross. He nailed them completely. He said he personally carried our sin in his body on the cross, willingly. He did not wait for you and I to repent before going to the cross. Himself on it, as on the altar of sacrifice, so that we might die to sin. Jesus died in the altar. In the, in the cross so that you and I will die to sin, become immune from the penalty and power of sin and live for righteousness by his wounds. You and I are healed. Praise the Lord. The song continues. So because our Lord is able to do this for us, that means he must be very strong. And Bible says in Proverbs 18, verse 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous runs into it and are safe. And are safe. And are safe. I have all for him forsaken, and all my idols torn from my heart, and now he keeps me by his power. Though all the world forsake me and set and tempt me so. Hallelujah. Jesus is my hiding place. We know of stories of people who took care of their idols. As Christians, we're supposed to examine ourselves daily and know whether there are idols in our heart, which is still there hindering our growth in Christian in Christendom. Have we been able to identify our idol? Let it be our prayer that you and I will find what our idol is and fight it. Bible says in Acts of Apostles chapter 19, Acts chapter 19, 18 to 19, it says, Many who had believed now came forward, confessing and disclosing their deeds. Verse 19, and a number of those who had practiced magic acts brought their books and burned them in front of everyone. Burned them in front of everyone. Brethren, idol, only you can find out what is the idol in your heart. We are expected to behave like Christians that gave their life in chapter 19. Bring them out and burn them. If you are not able to identify your idols, if you pray and say, God, help me. Holy Spirit, speak to me. What are the idols in my heart? Help me to burn them because I want to make heaven. The song continues, through Jesus, I shall safely reach the goal. Through Jesus. It's not through my work. It's not through your work. It's not because you give, you pay tight. It's not because of anything about us. It's through Jesus. 
And that is why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. Nobody can come unto my father except through me. The song was right and correct. If we read 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, it says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life, to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. There is a fight to fight, and there is a confession to make. And we are called to fight a good fight of faith. Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, 13 to, Matthew chapter 24, 12 to 13. He says, because of multiplication of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Verse 13 is very important, brethren. I read from Matthew chapter 24, 12 to 13. And verse, verse 13 says, but the one who perseveres to the end will be saved. The one who perseveres to the end will be saved. Jesus has paid the price. He gave it to us free of charge. And now we are left to run the race. And the one who perseveres to the end will be saved. Jesus made this statement himself. We need to always get the truth about our salvation and how we can make heaven. The song continues. We will never, he will never, never leave me nor forsake me here. He will never, never leave me nor forsake me here. We are citizens of heaven. We are here on a short sojourn. Some stay here for 40, some 60, some 92 plus. Like my father-in-law now is 92 years old and still moving on. But Bible is saying, he, uh, sorry, the song says, he will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here. When we read the parable of the lost sheep. When we read the parable of lordship from Luke chapter 15, 1 to 7, Jesus demonstrates what this singer was saying. Luke chapter 15, 1 to 7. He reads, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him. But the Pharisees and the teacher of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Hallelujah. Verse 3, then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my sheep. I tell you the same way there is a special joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 persons who do not need to repent. Jesus is always going for sinners. And that is why he gave this parable. Left 99 that doesn't need repentance and went after for the one that needs repentance. And that is why he commanded us to go into the world and preach to all creatures. It is our responsibility. He abandoned the 99. You are okay, but I'm going to go after the lost one, and I will find it. So God will never forsake us, even though we sleep and begin to backslide. 
he still comes after us only if we shall get the signal while i live in faith why i live by faith and do his blessed will the song ended live by faith and do his will we are called to live by faith and do the will of god bible says without faith we cannot please god so please let's live by faith it says, a wall of fire about me. I have nothing now to fear. <laughs> you see, once in a while, there are challenges. There are walls of fire. But when you are in Christ Jesus, when you are deep in him, when you are doing his will, don't bother about the wall of fire. Fire has come. And this reminds us about the story about the three Hebrew boys which we read from Daniel chapter 3, verse 21 to 25. Remember the song. The song says, a wall of fire about me, I have nothing to fear. The story goes like this, verse 21, Daniel chapter 3, verse 21 to 25. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments, and we are cast into the midst of the burning fairy furnace. Verse 22. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abadnado. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in, his, in a haste and spoke, saying to his counselor, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hot. Hallelujah. That speaks about God's protection about, uh, around us. What is that fire to be feared? What is it? If you, as Bible students, we know this story, that these Hebrew boys were not ready to worship the idol. And the consequence of not doing the will of the king was death. And they were ready to die. And they told Nebuchadnezzar, O king, concerning this idol, we are not going to worship it. If you throw us into that furnace, our God will save us. The one that challenges me is when they say, even if he doesn't save us, what prayer points have you now? Praying and praying. And I think it must be answered. Have you come to a point where you say, Lord, you know what? Even if you don't answer this prayer, you remain my God. So the three Hebrew boys were thrown into the fire. All of a sudden, remember, they were bound so that they would not escape. And the people that threw them into those power were burnt. That tells you the, the temperature of that fire or furnace was intense. The miracle comes. One, in the fire, they were not bound. In Christ, you are not bound. Even if other people see you as bound, I want to tell you you are free in the name of Jesus. When they were thrown into the fire, another miracle God opened the eyes of the king to see the one that takes care of us. And Holy Spirit put in his mind who that person is. If you are reading the Bible, there is no place the Son of God was introduced. It was only in this verse for the first time. He said, doesn't the fourth one look like the Son of God? 
Who told Nebuchadnezzar they are a son of God? The Spirit can tell us a lot of things. And when we are in Christ and the situation gets hot, the Son of God emerges to see us free. Hallelujah. He says, and the form of the fort is like the Son of God. The form of the fort is like the Son of God. Today, people are still arguing whether Jesus is the Son of God or not. Far back into time, Nebuchadnezzar revealed it. When you pass through waters, I will be with you. And when you go through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched. The flames will not set you ablaze. I just read from Isaiah 43 2. Again, from Psalm 34 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. It will be unfortunate if we don't recognize that afflictions may come to Christians. I read from Psalm 34, verse 19. Afflictions will come. And at times, affliction comes to bring a test to us. To know whether we shall trust on horses and chariots instead of the name of the Lord. And through afflictions, it helps us to draw closer to God. Because that time we seek God and come near to God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Praise the Lord. The song continues. With his manner, my hungry soul shall feel. Then sweeping up to the glory, I'll see his blessed face. When rivers of delight shall ever roll. Hallelujah. You know, I'll wrap up this message with a story I read from a book about Thomas Hudson of England. I think it happened in 1871. Thomas Hudson. Thomas Hudson was a very wonderful Christian. And he was arrested because of his faith to the point that he was brought through before the bishops to reject what he stood for. This story happened in 1558, and it happened in England. He says, Thomas Houston had come to the place of execution without denying his faith. The bishop questioned him again and again in order to weaken his faith in Christ Jesus. The crown he looked on. Trouble will come to us at times over and over to shake our face, to derail our focus on Christ. So this story says that the crowd looked on curiously about what the matter will do next, because he was questioned, questioned, questioned. At the last minute, whether he will deny Christ. Just before the chain around him was made fast, Houston stooped, slipped out of, from under the chain, and stood a little to one side. And there was calm all over the open space. Everyone wondered why he hesitated or delayed to continue to the execution. What he did was he prayed. Only Houston knew the real reason why he had stepped down. At last, at the very last minute, he had suddenly been attacked with doubts and felt his faith growing weak and not willing to die while feeling this way. This is deep. 
he was not willing to die, although he knows he will die, but he wants to make sure that his state of mind was correct when he's dying. And so what did he do? He left the chain alone and came out. And maybe they were thinking that he's going to deny Christ. He knelt down there and prayed. What happened? Then he rose with great joy and revitalized man. And he cried out, now, thank God, I am strong. I don't care what man can do to me. There is power in prayer, especially when it appears that you have no way of escape. Going to the stake again, he put the chain around himself and the fire was lit. And the fire was lit. You know, those days when they want to really give you real good punishment, they put you on a chain and suspend you and then light a fire from the bottom of your leg that will burn up. In Christian life, we battle against rulers and authorities. To withstand their attacks, we must depend on God's strength and use every piece of his armor. Use every piece of his armor to guard ourselves. We cannot guard ourselves by our own ability. And I pray that God will use this message and this wonderful song to minister to us. G, please, can you come? Let us sing it again. The, the, the one I preached on. The... 